Hey guys, we're just continuing straight on from the previous video where we're now going to be finding the stress di distribution in the sand layer. So we need to once again look at the conditions we have. We are looking at short term, the question said immediately after construction, and we have a sand. So short term sand, the sand is going to drain straight away. So a clay is undrained, but a sand, even in the short term, a sand is drained. So we have drained conditions. And that means we're going to be looking at an effective stress analysis. So we saw in the first video that it was only a clay in the short term we did total stress and pretty much everything else is effective stress analysis. So we have short term sand, but because the sand um, is quite permeable, it will drain quickly. And that means we're doing an effective stress analysis, even though we're in the short term. So the first thing we're going to do is find N subscript phi. We know that that still equals 1 plus sine phi dash now on 1 minus sine phi dash. So it's changed to a phi dash because we're using effective stress, which has these parameters, phi dash and c dash. <clears throat> so phi dash is given to us as 34 degrees. So if we found this, it would be 1 plus sine 34 on 1 minus sine 34. And we would get an answer of 3.54. So we've found N phi, and now we're going to construct our table. So this one, because we're doing an effective stress analysis, it's a bit more tricky. So we're going to have Z, sigma V, U, sigma V dash, which we know is sigma V minus U, sigma H dash, and then we still need to get back to our total stress, stress in the horizontal direction, which is sigma H, which equals sigma H dash plus U. So those are the headings of our columns. So once again, we know that we need to look at the top and bottom of our layer always. So in terms of Z, the top of our layer would be four meters down 